I rode the most dangerous railway in the world. This train's perilous path will shock you. All railway tracks possess a degree of danger, given that trains thunder along them at high speeds. However, certain railway tracks escalate the peril beyond the norm. These are the most dangerous railway tracks in the world. Number 20. The Death Railway. You know you're doing something wrong train-wise if your railroad's called the Death Railway. Because that means at least one person has been killed on the tracks, and more likely than not, a whole lot more. But in this case, it was more about how the railroad got built that led to that name. The Burma Railway was a 258-mile railway between Banpong, Thailand, and a place in Burma that was built by the Empire of Japan in 1943 to support its forces in the Burma campaign of World War II. So, a railway that has great historical significance, but as you can guess, it came at a bit of a cost, not the least of which was the cost of human lives that had to work on this railway. Because you would recall that, at this point in Japanese history, meaning World War II, Japan was part of the Axis powers. And so, the people who built the railway were prisoners of war, including over 60,000 people from the Allied nations. Many other people from the area of Southeast Asia were forcibly drafted into the making of this railroad, and many would perish in its construction. 12,621 Allied POWs died during the construction, and the dead POWs also included 6,904 British personnel, over 2,000 Australians, over 2,000 Dutch, and 133 Americans. So, while it's not known for derailments, it is a train track that is steeped in controversy due to the people who died making it. Thankfully, the mass majority of the railroad was shut down after the war, but a section of it would then be reopened in 1957. Number 19. The Devil's Nose, Ecuador. Making a part of the Transandian Railway that connects Alaska to Sabambi in Ecuador, the Devil's Nose train is one of the most exciting routes in the world. With a journey time of around two and a half hours, you'll pass along a zigzagging track alongside vertical cliff edges. And while beginning at 5,900 feet above sea level, it descends more than 3,000 feet in just seven and a half miles. As you can imagine, the surrounding landscape is treacherous, and there was a huge cost in building the track in the first place. Taking 33 years to finish between 1872 and 1905, it was constructed by 4,000 workers from Jamaica and other nearby regions, and it's thought as many as 2,000 of them died during the process, mainly as a result of illnesses, rock slides, and other difficulties with the terrain. That wasn't the end of the danger related to the route, though, as it used to be possible to sit on top of the train to give stunning views. Unfortunately, two passengers were decapitated when doing this when the train passed under a low-hanging electrical cable. So now, everyone has to stay inside at all times. Despite these tragic events, the Devil's Nose remains a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors from around the world eager to experience its breathtaking views and unique engineering. The route itself is a testament to human perseverance and ingenuity in the face of natural obstacles. Today, safety measures have been significantly enhanced to protect passengers, ensuring a safe yet thrilling experience. The train now also includes guided tours, providing historical insights and highlighting the cultural significance of this monumental railway. This blend of adventure, history, and stunning landscapes continues to make the Devil's Nose train journey an unforgettable experience for all who dare to take it. Number 18. The Napier-Gisburn Railway, New Zealand. The Palmerston to Gisburn line in New Zealand was built between 1872 and 1942 and instantly became a vital route across the country for passengers and freight. For the vast majority of the route, nothing looks out of the ordinary, but the section between Napier and Gisburn is one of the only railways in the world that passes across an active airport runway. The reason for this unusual planning was simply because of the lack of space. The railway was, of course, built long before the airport, but when authorities wanted to bring air travel to the region, they realized there wasn't enough flat land available to fully dedicate to an airport. The only alternative was to allow the runway to bisect the railway because diverting the rail line would itself be far too costly, disruptive, and time-consuming. Of course, great effort has been made to ensure that a train and a plane don't ever cross paths there, with air traffic control in constant communication with the rail authorities about where the trains are on the track. But there's always a chance, albeit a slim one, that one day, things won't go entirely to plan. Number 17. Coranda Scenic Railway, Australia. Opened in 1891 and operating virtually constantly since then to this day, the Coranda Scenic Railway is a 23-mile-long route that travels between the city of Cairns, Queensland, Australia, and the inland town of Coranda. Between the two is the Great Dividing Range, the largest mountain range in Australia and the fifth-largest non-oceanic mountain range in the world, which means the railway takes a winding and treacherous route to get to its destination. It took more than five years to build and includes 15 hand-built tunnels and 37 bridges, 
all of which take it from sea level at the start to an altitude of 1,100 feet. An unknown number of workers died during construction, and the same dangers they faced still pose a risk to trains that travel along the track. In 2010, for instance, a train was derailed, and five passengers were seriously injured when a landslide dropped several tons of rock onto the track as the train was passing through. Still, despite these risks, it's seen as one of the most beautiful and scenic railroads in the whole world and is now only used for tourism purposes, since an alternative, faster, and more reliable route was built for freight and passenger services. Number 16. Argo Ged Train Railroad, Indonesia The Argo Ged train, which is also known as the Goper, is operated by the Indonesian Railway Company on a route between Gambar Railway Station in Jakarta and Bandung in Java. Regarded as an executive class train, it covers the 103-mile distance in around three hours. While the cities of Indonesia are heavily built up, the countryside is covered in pristine forest, and the railway passes through regions where there aren't any signs of human life for miles around. Twenty trains go in each direction every day, and it's the most luxurious way to do the journey with air-conditioned cars, a dining car with prayer facilities, TVs throughout, and the capacity for up to 400 passengers on certain services. There's also a priority class coach that has video-on-demand services on each seat, a bar, dedicated attendance, and improved toilet facilities. But no matter how much you pay for the trip, there's one thing you can't avoid. It's particularly dangerous route. When designing one section of the railway that crosses a valley, engineers realized that the gradient differential, along with what would be needed to clear the land for the track, was simply impossible to do within budget. They had to look for a radical solution, and their answer was a rickety bridge that crosses the two sides and is almost 200 feet high above the valley floor. The view may well be spectacular, but the first time you cross this bridge, you'll almost certainly be holding on for dear life. Number 15. Georgetown Loop Railroad, USA Located in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, the Georgetown Loop Railroad is a four-and-a-half-mile-long stretch of track that takes passengers 640 feet up into the mountains through spectacular but treacherous terrain. Opened in 1877, it was an astonishing accomplishment for the time. The railway is twice the length of the real-world distance it covers because, to traverse the landscape, it's made up of a series of horseshoe curves, gradients of up to 4%, and for bridges across Clear Creek, one of which is known as the Devil's Gate High Bridge and is one of the most terrifying and incredible railway bridges in the world. To finish it off is the loop that gives the railroad its name, which turns back around at the top of the gorge. Since land wasn't anywhere near flat enough to build this curve, engineers instead constructed a 95-foot tall trestle that the tracks were laid upon, something that's largely remained untouched since it was first put in place there more than 120 years ago. While the line was originally used to help support mines in the area, it soon became more known as a tourist attraction, and despite being closed for almost half of the 20th century, it reopened in 1984 and now welcomes tens of thousands of visitors each year. Number 14. The Qinghai Tibet Railway Connecting Xining in the Qinghai province of China with Lhasa in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China, the Qinghai Tibet Railway holds the record as having the highest section of operational railroad in the world. It covers a distance of 1,200 miles and was a massive undertaking to build. It was done in two sections, the first of which was completed in 1984, and the second, which took a further 22 years before it opened due to its extreme altitude, and likely because of political reasons, Tibet was the last part of China to be connected with a railway. Some of the statistics are almost unbelievable. The Tangula Pass is the highest point on the railway, reaching 16,640 feet above sea level, while at an elevation of 16,627 feet, the Tangula Station is the highest station in the world. There's also the Fenguoshan Tunnel, which is the highest railway tunnel in the world, at 16,093 feet above sea level. There are 675 bridges along the road, and at least 340 miles of track that's laid on top of permafrost. Beyond the engineering challenges of building the railway, only special trains can travel along it. The altitude means that oxygen levels in the air are much lower, so each train has a doctor on board and a personal oxygen supply for each passenger, in case they encounter difficulties. You also have to sign a waiver before boarding to say that you understand the risks of high-altitude travel. But, despite these precautions, there have been several known fatalities over the past few years that are linked with oxygen deficiencies. Number 13. Cape Town Train Troubles So far, I've shown you troubles that were caused by trains, the tracks, and even Mother Nature. But, as we all know, there's one other danger out there in the world that causes problems for many. That's right, it's you and me and everyone else. That's how humans can cause trouble for people, and that especially happens in Cape Town, South Africa. They apparently have a train system that's downright dangerous to go on, 
not because of the trains themselves but rather the people that are inside of them. There are so many thefts and assaults by passengers on the train that the trains are basically cancelled every single day so that they can deal with the issues. And if you're wondering why the authorities won't get involved, it's easier said than done. With so many trains, so many people to look after, and of course numerous carts, it's hard to monitor everything. So, thus, if you do go to Cape Town, you better have your head on a swivel if you want to keep all of your stuff. This dire situation has led to a significant decline in the use of public transportation, driving commuters to seek alternative means, despite the inconveniences and extra costs. The continuous cycle of crime and violence on these trains has not only impacted the daily lives of commuters, but has also posed a significant challenge for tourism in the region. Efforts to improve security and surveillance on trains have been met with logistical and financial hurdles. Despite these challenges, the community and local authorities are striving to find solutions to restore safety and reliability to Cape Town's train system, emphasizing the urgent need for collective action against public transport crime. Number 12. Maklong Railway, Thailand The Maklong Railway in Thailand is the primary route connecting Wangwian Yai and Bangkok with Samut Songkram in the central region of the country covering a distance of 42 miles. It is actually split into two sections because of the vast Takan River that carves through the landscape, and the only way to get between the stations on either bank of the river is by boat. While the vast majority of the line has been built along flat ground through sparsely populated areas, there's one section that seems absolutely crazy to visitors from other countries, and it's why it's regarded as so potentially dangerous. That's because it passes through the Mae Klong Railway Market, which is one of the country's largest fresh seafood markets and is built up around the actual track. It has the nickname Tulitram Hub, which means umbrella pull-down market, because when a train reaches the stretch of track, the stall owners pack up their things and move further away from the rails while it passes before putting them back in place once the train is gone. With 17 trains passing in each direction per day and there being no signals on the entire length of the line, all it would take is one mistake, and the results could be deadly. The only counter to this is that it's also one of the slowest moving trains in the world, with an average speed along the line of just 18 and a half miles per hour. Number 11. Train to the Clouds, Argentina. The amazingly named Train to the Clouds is a railroad in Argentina that connects the city of Salta with the Chilean border city of Palvarilla, that's on the mountain border between the two countries. It's the fifth highest railway in the world, maintaining an average altitude of 13,800 feet above sea level. While it was originally built for the transportation of goods and passengers, it's now only used as a tourist line. Along the route, the train passes across 29 bridges, 21 tunnels, 13 viaducts, 2 spirals, and 2 zigzags. And the reason why it's so complicated is that the decision was made early on in its design not to use rack rails and instead use normal rails. This means that the gradient had to be kept to a minimum along the 130-mile route, and for the most part, it worked perfectly. It attracts visitors from far and wide who want to see the spectacular views. But when something goes wrong, it passes through such a remote region that it's difficult to tackle any difficulties. In 2005, one of the trains broke down at an altitude of 11,500 feet, which resulted in the passengers having to be evacuated by helicopter, and led to 37 miles of track having to be replaced. Then in 2014, a similar thing happened when a train was derailed at an altitude of 13,000 feet, and again the passengers had to be evacuated by helicopter. Currently, because of safety concerns, at least 80% of the route is now served by bus instead of train, but it's hoped that one day tourists will again be able to experience the full majesty of the train to the clouds. Number 10. Linton and Linmouth Cliff Railway Yes, you heard that right. This is a train that full-on goes off of a cliff, so enjoy the ride. Now, I'm just kidding. But the name Cliff does pertain to this train, as you'll see very soon, because the Linton and Linmouth Cliff Railway is a cliff lift, in that it has a passenger cart that goes up a mountain cliff so that it can take people from Linton to Linmouth, which are very obviously separated by the cliff. While early use was largely focused on moving freight, the funicular railway became popular with tourists, and it became mostly used for passenger travel. Not hard to see why, as it was a novel way of getting around that most people couldn't ignore. It is the world's highest and steepest water-powered cliff railway in operation. That's right, this is powered by water. That's pretty cool, right? But why is it dangerous, though? Well, that would be because of the terrain. It's been proven to be safe, but going up a cliff, in any circumstance, is dangerous no matter who you are. As a result, you're advised to be careful, especially as you're going up. Plus, if the weather begins to mess around with the cliff area, that could cause problems. Number 9. Aso Minami Route, Japan Japan is known for having the most reliable and fastest train network in the world. So much so that if a train does ever run late, the drivers are often relieved of their jobs 
and all passengers are given cards as proof for their workplaces that their reason for being late is true. But while this is the case for urban and intercity services, the rail lines in rural Japan are on an equal footing to what you'd expect to see elsewhere in the world, and in some cases seem incredibly dangerous. The Aso Minami route is the best example of this. Opened in 1928, it travels between Tatino Station in Miyagi Aso and Takamori Station in Takamori. At just 11 miles long, it doesn't look too treacherous on a map, but that's before you realize that directly between the two stations is Mount Aso, a historically active volcano, and the train line goes right around it. There aren't many railroads in the world where a volcanic eruption is a legitimate risk, but you only need to see the flattened trees around the track that have fallen victim to lava flows. In recent years, the railway has actually been completely shut while repairs are carried out. But on this occasion, it wasn't as a result of a volcano but because of a powerful series of earthquakes that struck the region in 2016. Number 8. Out Nikwa Chucho, South Africa. With rail lines around the rest of the world, South Africa once had a vast network of steam-powered locomotives. But as the lines were electrified, the sight of a steam train became increasingly rare. The last remaining one was the Out Nikwa Chucho, and the reason why its line was never fitted with electric cables was that the route was so treacherous. Connecting the towns of George and Nisna in the country's western province, its 42-mile stretch of track that passes by some of the most stunning scenery South Africa has to offer. It follows a spectacular section of the garden route along the coastline and finally crosses the part that it's most famous for, a huge bridge that crosses a lagoon before reaching Nisna. This and several other bridges along its path are what makes it such a potentially dangerous route simply because very little has been done to maintain them since they were first finished almost a century ago. Nowadays, the route is only used for tourist trips, which means it receives even less investment than the commuter railway, but fortunately, incidents on the line remain relatively rare. Number 7. Veracruz, Mexico Veracruz is one of the 32 states of Mexico and covers a large stretch of the coastline of the Gulf of Mexico. It's an important region to the country's economy particularly for the climate that's so good for growing crops. But it's also become known in recent years as a hotspot for gang activity. The trains that travel the railways in the region are known to carry wealthier passengers or potentially valuable cargo, so it's one of the most likely places in the world where you might find yourself in the middle of a train hijacking. In December of 2020, for example, a train heading through El Cutzingo on its way to the port city of Veracruz with a consignment of Volkswagen cars to export was derailed after the train tracks were sabotaged, the culprits had removed more than six feet of track, so the train had no chance. Some of the cars were completely flipped over, and others fell down a ravine. Luckily, no one was injured. That can't be said for many of the other incidents that happened on the railways there, with regular armed hijackings by local militia. The best advice if you're traveling through the region is to think long and hard about whether you really want to do so by rail. These incidents have prompted increased security measures along key routes, but the challenge of patrolling such a vast network remains. Companies operating in the area are investing in technology and infrastructure improvements to prevent sabotage, though the effectiveness of these measures is yet to be fully seen. For travelers and cargo transporters alike, the situation has led to a re-evaluation of transportation options, with some opting for the longer but potentially safer routes by road. Despite these challenges, the railway remains a vital artery for commerce in Veracruz, underscoring the complex balance between economic necessity and safety in the region. Number 6. Wabash Railroad's 5th District. Now, if you were to run your own railway, what would be one thing that you would have to count on doing from time to time? If you said maintenance, you'd be correct. But for Wabash Railroad's 5th District, they have a railroad that's so bad it constantly needs fixing. You see, the area that the railway was built on features a lot of swampland, to the point that the tracks are bent, broken, and even more. Despite all of that, though, very heavy trains are sent onto the tracks to deliver materials. It's by and large one of the most dangerous tracks in the world. Yes, they do repair work when they can, but the damage keeps happening, and they can't keep fixing the railroad every time. So, they just send the trains down it. This relentless cycle of damage and repair has not only put a financial strain on the railroad, but also risks the safety of the crew and the integrity of the freight. Engineers driving the trains have to be exceptionally skilled to navigate the precarious tracks. The company has looked into alternative routes, but the costs and logistical challenges are daunting. Despite these ongoing issues, the Wabash Railroad's 5th District continues to operate, showcasing the sheer determination to keep the supply chain moving, no matter the risk. Number 5. Pumban Bridge, India The Pumban Bridge in India, which opened in 1914, was the first sea bridge to be built in India and connects Pumban Island with the mainland and the town of Mundupam. 
It was a marvel of engineering at the time, with the majority of the track laid on a bridge on 143 concrete pillars, but with a section halfway along it that's a double-leaf bascule bridge, which means it can be raised to allow ships to pass through. The entire bridge itself is 6,700 feet long and is 41 feet above the waterline. Until the late 1980s, it was the main connection between the island and the mainland. As time progressed, once it had opened, it became clear that the design had meant trains traveling along the route were at risk of dangers. However, in particular, what happens when a storm moves in? With a flat ocean around, there's no natural formations to break up the wind, so it's able to whip the sea up and in some cases create waves that crash over the bridge. Any train that's on there at the time would almost certainly be washed into the water, so it's unable to operate even if there's a slight chance of unfavorable weather. There have been several times in the bridge's history where a storm has caused such significant damage that it's been forced to close for extended periods of time, and the worst event happened in 1964 when a 25-foot storm surge struck, which overturned the train and killed all 150 passengers on board. Number 4. Pilatus Railway, Switzerland the Pilatus Railway in Switzerland connects Alpnackstad, which is next to Lake Alpnack, with the station at the Essel Summit, at an elevation of 6,800 feet. First opened in 1889 for steam trains, and then reopened in 1937 for electric trains, it climbs a vertical distance of 5,300 feet along a stretch of line that's just 2.8 miles long. To do this, it travels at inclines of up to 48%, with an average of 35%, which makes it easily the steepest rack railway in the world. The rack system, which involves a series of teeth between the rails that the train climbs up with a cogwheel, ensures that the trains will only move in the desired direction and means that there aren't any points or switches on the line like there are with other conventional railways. The rails were all secured on solid rock with iron ties, ensuring they stay firmly in place without any need for ballast. While this all sounds safe in theory, the thing that makes this railway so potentially dangerous is its age. The rack rails in use are still the original ones that were laid more than a century ago. And when engineers realized they were beginning to wear away, their solution was to simply turn the rails over onto the other side. Because of the increase of sliding, the railway is only operational between May and October each year, when snowfall is at a minimum, and there are plans in the near future to replace everything to ensure it remains fit for purpose for at least the next 100 years. Number 3. The Cumbers and Toltec Scenic Railroad The Cumbers and Toltec Scenic Railroad covers the 64-mile route between Antonito, Colorado, and Chama, New Mexico. While in its current guise it was first opened in 1970, it takes passengers along a route that was completed in 1880 and was vital to supplying the miners involved in the gold rush. Because it had to reach extremely remote areas, a normal gauge railroad simply wasn't going to work. Instead, engineers built it with a 3-foot gauge, instead of the normal 4 feet and 8 inches, and this allowed it to curve around cliff edges and treacherous overhangs. Not only did operators of the railroad have to deal with careful weight management to ensure the trains remained on the tracks, but there were serious weather conditions to contend with too, especially in one stretch called the Cumbers Pass, which at an altitude of 10,000 feet, could see as much as 500 inches of snowfall across a winter. Now, though, it only operates as a tourist attraction, but even this has its dangers. The route has had to be closed several times in recent years because of either the risk of wildfires or because of damage caused by fire. And there's usually very little warning about when these infernos may strike. Number 2. White Pass and Yukon Route Anyone who watches the Discovery Channel show Gold Rush knows that the Yukon and certain parts of Alaska are some of the most treacherous areas to traverse, even if you have a vehicle. So, it's not surprising that a particularly dangerous route through the area was by that of train, back in the earliest days of the region being popular. I speak, of course, of the 1898 gold rush that occurred in the Yukon, where people came in by thousands in order to try and make it big. But getting to the gold fields was no easy task, and thus the miners would use the White Pass and Yukon Route Railways to try to get there. The route continued operation until 1982, and in 1988 was partially revived as a heritage railway. But why was it so dangerous back then? Well, simply put, the terrain and the weather weren't the best to go through. Remember that these were the earlier days of the train, and thus certain safety measures weren't exactly taken. Not to mention, you had a bunch of people on the trains that were more focused on getting gold than, say, surviving afterward. Also, the Yukon is infamous for its weather patterns at times, and that includes going from dry ground one day to a cold snap the next. And if that happened as they were going up through the mountains, that doesn't make it very fun. But they did what they felt was necessary, all to get that sweet, glimmering gold. Number 1. Watered Down Railways I end this video with Mother Nature's striking once again and rather risky engineers who push trains to their limits and beyond. I say that because there are many cases of trains going through areas that are either flooded, watered down, 
or have water so near to them that could actually cause a derailment, and yet they actually push through? Is this solely because they feel they need to get to their destination, or they don't feel any danger? It's honestly hard to say, but they do put themselves, their cargo, if not their passengers, at risk with every single pass. What did you think of this look at the railways that may seem perfectly fine but are, in fact, a bit scary to behold up close? This daring approach to railroading underscores a complex balance between operational necessity and safety considerations. Engineers and conductors are often faced with making real-time decisions in unpredictable weather conditions, highlighting their critical role in safeguarding the journey. Additionally, these scenarios shed light on the resilience and engineering marvels behind railway systems, designed to withstand nature's tests up to a certain limit. Yet, the increasing frequency of extreme weather events calls for re-evaluating these limits and enhancing rail infrastructure to adapt to changing climate conditions, ensuring the safety and reliability of train travel in the face of nature's unpredictability. Have you ever ridden on one of these train tracks before? Let me know all about it in the comments below.